All right, estimating irrational numbers on page 24. We had that whole video on how I wanted you to estimate these numbers, how I want you to go to the tenths place. The book is wanting you to go to the hundredths place, so we're just going to humor them until they get to the point of no return, and then we're going to skip it. What numbers are not rational? Let's look at a number like the square root of 2, the square root of a number that is not a perfect square. Since the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 4 is 2, that means that the square root of 2 must be between what two integers? The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. Since the square root of 2 falls between those two numbers, then the square root of 2 has to be between 1 and 2. It has to be between 1 and 2. Draw a point on the number line where you could locate the square root of 2. Now, if I'm looking for how many numbers fall between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4, you've got the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, right? There's just two numbers in there. Square root of 2, square root of 3. Now, how did I decide that? I just spaced them out evenly. Okay, if you've got a number line, the beauty of that is you can space things out evenly. I only had two numbers to fit in there, so I spread them out into thirds, and I put those numbers there. Notice neither of them are at the halfway point. Okay, this would be 1.5. So would I want to estimate the square root of 2 to be 1.5? Would that be a logical explanation? I mean, I can see from my number line that it is less than 1.5, okay? So when I estimate, I'm not going to use 1.5. I want to go just a little bit below that. When I estimate this, of course, here's the point that they draw. I am going to estimate it at 1.4, okay? I'm estimating at 1.4. If I wanted the exact number, I would use a calculator. I hope that everybody knows how to do a square root. You're just going to put in square root of 2. I'll type in that square root key. It's going to give me an answer. Now, I said 1.4. The calculator says 1.41. I am close enough. Okay, That's good enough for me. The book wants us to go on, and they're trying to explain that on 4 through 7. One place value is enough for me. Now, down at the bottom, it's going to talk to you about a definition of irrational numbers. This is what's important. This is what you need to learn today. The square root of 2 cannot be expressed as a terminating or repeating decimal, so it cannot be written as a fraction. Now, all of that, take out that square root of 2, and substitute irrational numbers. Irrational numbers cannot be expressed as a terminating or repeating decimal, so it cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, there's your definition. Here, the word irrational means cannot be set as a ratio. It means it cannot be written as a fraction. The set of rational and irrational numbers make up the set of real numbers. All of this is on your graphic organizer. What I need you to get from this, rational numbers terminate, they are whole numbers, or they are repeating decimals. You're going to see the end, or you're going to see the pattern. You're going to know where to stop. When you see an irrational number, you're going to ask yourself, where do I round this to? Right? Because when you see this big, long list of numbers, like we had here, okay, here was the answer we had for square root of 2. 
the first thing 10 of you would come to my desk and say is where do you want me to round this to? That's, that's where you go with this. If you're asking yourself that question, the chances are you are dealing with an irrational number. Okay? They just go on and on and on with random numbers. Irrational numbers do not terminate and they do not repeat. All right, we've got another one of these they want us to estimate. The square root of 5 is between which two integers? I want you to think of your perfect squares. The square root of 4 is below it, and the square root of 9 is above it. The square root of 5 is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. When they say which two integers, that would be between 2, which is the square root of 4, and 3, which is the square root of 9. So we would know that the square root of 5 has to be 2 point something. 2 point something. Now, if we're just putting numbers in order, a lot of times just knowing 2 point something is enough. Okay, if we're comparing something that's going to be 2 point something and something else that's going to be 3 point something, we know which one is bigger. We don't have to go any farther. We just want you to be able to estimate to the tenths place in case you're deciding between 3 and something that is almost 3 or maybe just a little bit more than 3. Okay, we just need you to be able to tell the difference in size of the number. Number 11, they want us to put this on the number line. Now, they've made us this beautiful number line that has all of the increments up to 3. We just need to decide where this square root would fall. Now, between 4 and 9 is 5 numbers. Square root of 5, square root of 6, square root of 7, square root of 8, square root of 9. There are 10 increments here. So we would have 2 increments per number. So square root of 5, I could put here. Square root of 6, square root of 7, square root of 8, and then there's square root of 9. I spaced everything out evenly on my number line so that I could make a better estimate. My estimate for the square root of 5 is 2.2. They want us to go farther. We're not doing that. Okay, our estimate is 2.2. Do we think we're accurate? I think we're accurate. If I want to be sure, I'll grab my calculator. I'll type in the square root of 5, and I get 2.23, a bunch of numbers. Is it rational or is it irrational? It is irrational. Good. Uh, we've already done number 14 at the bottom of the page. I just showed it to you. And we are done with this page. Number 18 is another example of a repeating decimal. They want us to write this as a fraction. They also want to know if it's rational or irrational. Guys, you do not have to make it a fraction to make this, a deci make this decision. It is a repeating decimal, which means it is rational. If it is a repeating decimal, it is rational. And yes, we can write this as a fraction, but we have to make it into two equations first. The first equation comes from setting 0.74 repeating equal to a variable. I'm going to use x. That's the first equation. The second equation comes from multiplying the first equation times the place value. So we need to know what place value to use. We don't want to use the tenths place because there's more there. We want to go to that smallest place value. We want to go to the hundredths place. The hundredths place would tell us to multiply by 100. 100 times x is 100x. 100 times 0 0.74 repeating will be 74.74 repeating. If you're wondering where the second 74 comes from, it's because this is repeating and it goes on forever. Okay, It's just there. Now, once you have the two equations, 
we're going to subtract. Okay, we're going to subtract. Subtract the smaller one from the larger one. So the larger one goes first. 100x minus x. I'll color code this for you. I've got the left side of each equation being subtracted. So 100x minus 1x. Now my right side is going to come from subtracting the two right sides. 74.74 repeating minus 0 0.74 repeating. I'll mark it for you as well so you can see it. That's where everything came from to write the equation. Now we just have to solve. 100x minus 1x is 99x. 74.74 repeating minus the 0.74 repeating is just 74. The whole purpose here was to remove the repeating portion of the problem. Now it's gone. We've got whole numbers that we can work with now. We're solving for x. The opposite of multiplying by 99 is dividing by 99. To get x is equal to 74 over 99. And that will not reduce. Number 19 is a thinking question. A circle has a circumference of 3 <coughs> pi inches. Is it possible to state the exact length of the circumference as a decimal? Now, when they say exact, they mean without rounding. Now, pi is an irrational number that has an unlimited amount of decimals. Can we write the circumference to an exact amount? as a decimal. No, you cannot. Okay, Irrational numbers cannot be written exactly as a decimal because those numbers go on forever. You would never write all of those numbers down. So the answer is no and that is your explanation. Number 20, this one's easy. Draw a Venn diagram showing the relationship among the following sets of numbers. That was your homework last night. Okay. A Venn diagram, it was just what we made on our graphic organizer. It was circles, should be circles inside of each other, but I made it as circles and rectangles so you could see the difference. So if you want to see what this one would look like, it's in your notes on your graphic organizer. Okay, on number 21, they want us to put all of these numbers into a category, rational versus irrational. It is either a whole number, a terminating or repeating decimal, or it is an irrational number. Do the easy ones first. Zero. Zero is rational. The next one I see that's super easy is 0.38. I can see the end. It's 0 0.38. It is rational. Uh, two pi. Pi is not even a number, right? It's this funky little symbol that represents a number that never ends. 2 pi is irrational. And now we, oh, here's a repeating decimal. A repeating decimal is always rational. 3.456 repeating. We're done with that one. That leaves us with four radicals. You have to check them, okay? Um, square root of 81, that's easy. Square root of 81 is 9, which makes it rational. The square root of 1.69 is a little harder because it's a decimal, but if you know your perfect squares, 169 is the perfect square of 13. So this would be 1.3, no. Yes, 1.3. The square root of one. 0.69 is 1.3. 1.3 is a terminating decimal, which makes it a rational number. Square root of 4 over square root of 9 would simplify to 2 thirds, which is a fraction. So square root of 4 over square root of 9 goes here. The square root of 50 simplifies to 5 square root of 2. And we have already established that the square root of 2 is irrational. So 5, not 5, square root of 50 
is irrational as well. Not going to get it. The square root of 2 over...